Victrix sent me their Gambit Tournament controller for Xbox Series X and S and PC. This thing's touted as the world's fastest licensed Xbox controller. We're gonna bust this thing out and take a look at everything it has to offer. Spoiler alert, it's a lot. The controller comes in this nice hard shell zipper carrying case that fits all the swappable parts and accessories. Right on top there, we got the extra faceplate sitting on the controller. This one's hard plastic with some grippy textures and it looks pretty good. Let's get the controller out of here. And this comes stock with the purple plate you can see here. This one's a soft rubbery material and it feels quite a bit different than the white plastic one. We got all the usual stuff here, analog sticks, D-pad, ABXY. There's the back paddles. We got our bumpers and our triggers and the trigger stops are adjustable by the way and I'm gonna show you that a little later in the video. I said this thing has a lot to offer and I meant it. There's a lot of swappable parts here, 14 to be exact. And what that means is you can get a customized setup based on your play style, which isn't something you can necessarily do with your basic everyday entry level controller. There's an extra long stick to help enhance precision movements and a standard height stick with a dome top versus the concave design on the stock ones. This is a different set of back paddles. These are a dual button design versus the quad that comes stock on there. These are a set of octagonal gates and what they're gonna do is kinda guide the sticks in a defined pattern. Here's a different type of D-pad that can replace the standard plus type that comes on the controller. And this is the cable. It's purple and three meters long, which is about 10 feet. Should give you enough room to move around as long as your PC or console isn't too far away. To get the stock face plate off, there's a little notch above the three and a half millimeter jack. You can just get your fingernail under there and it lifts off really easily. It's held in place with little magnets. You can see all these little silver things on the back there. Like I said before, this purple one's soft and rubbery. It's a lot different feeling than the usual hard plastic you see on most controllers. This white one's exactly that though. It's hard plastic, it's rigid, and it's got some texture on there to enhance grippiness. Getting a faceplate installed on here is just as easy as taking it off. It just pops onto the top and the magnets do the rest. It's a nice toolless design. I really like how this white one looks and feels, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna end up being my go-to. What's really cool here is when you get the faceplate off, you can see all the internal parts like the vibration motors and electronics. I kind of wish there was a see-through faceplate option because this looks awesome. I like being able to see all that detail. These analog sticks just pull off and that gives us an even better view of the hardware and what's going on under the hood. To replace it, you just line up the hole in the stick with the post on the controller and then press down until it slides all the way on. This is the precision stick. It's longer and gives you a wider range of movement to be able to pinpoint your target. Feels nice and smooth and has a satisfying amount of tension. Bounce back is quick with a small amount of wobbling. A relatively small dead zone should be able to keep any of that from registering. Let's get this standard D-pad off here. Before we put the other one on, we need to reinstall the faceplate, otherwise it's gonna block it from making contact with the magnets. There we go, look at that. Oh yeah, I really like this compared to the plus looking one. The concave shape and raised edges make it really easy and quick to press. It's also really comfortable to keep your thumb on. I'll be keeping this one on here for sure. Here's a look at the back where the paddles are. This little switch is a release mechanism. Press it and the paddles come off. Grab the other set and throw those on here and now we have a simple two button layout. ABXY are tactile and crisp, feels good. Should be really easy to tell when you're about to register a press. Bumpers are clicky and can register an actuation regardless of where you press, whether it's in the middle or off to the very tip on one of the edges. Now these aren't your average triggers. Out of the box, they have a long travel distance, but it's actually adjustable in five different positions. That's a big deal. You can basically turn these into ultra fast hair triggers when you need it, or keep them nice and slow and relaxed for something like the throttle in a racing game. The way these work is you press the clutch buttons on the back, and while you're holding them down, you move the triggers to the position you want, and you can feel these very faint little bumps for each of the five selectable positions. Once you find what you want, just let go, and boom, your new trigger stops are set. And you can set each one separately if you want, so you can have one fast and one slow. This is a really cool way to adjust trigger stops, and because it's all done physically right on the controller, you could actually do it mid-game if you want, as long as you get used to those adjustment mechanisms. It's a really cool feature. These are the swappable gates. We can take the stock circular ones off the faceplate by pushing from the back, and then we can grab the octagonal ones, line them up with the slots, and then just press them into place. These are gonna restrict your stick movement a bit and make it a bit more directional compared to the full range you'll get with circular ones. I can see these being good for platformers or other 2D type of games, but for everything else, especially shooters and racing, I'd go circular. Before I plug this in and fire it up, I'm gonna put the circular gates back on and swap out the concave stick on the upper left with the domed one because I really wanna play around with that and see how it feels. So this is what I'm going with. I've got the long precision stick, short dome stick on the upper left, square D-pad, and the white face plate. I'm just gonna plug this in, and I'm using it on PC, by the way. As if this thing didn't have enough customization already, you can actually remap the back paddles to any button on the controller. Press and hold the function button, and then press whichever button you wanna map a control to. 
When you see the little LED flashing, press the button you want to map. And if you did it right, you should get three blinks of the little LED. It's easy. And if you want to clear the settings, press and hold the function button and double press one of the back buttons. Done. If you like playing around with software, you can go over to the Microsoft Store and get the Victrix Control Hub app. This lets you program all the buttons, calibrate the analog sticks, set dead zones, adjust audio settings, and create three custom EQ profiles. It's a pretty detailed app and it adds a lot more to the already huge number of features on the Gambit. It also comes with a lifetime subscription for Dolby Atmos. Just get the Dolby Access app from the Microsoft Store and then plug a headset into the controller. It'll automatically detect everything and activate the included license. There's no product keys to enter or anything like that, which is awesome because I can't stand entering keys and access codes for everything. Dolby Atmos adds even more options for immersive audio, including presets, customizable profiles, and virtual surround sound. All right, now for some gaming. This is Apex Legends. I usually play this with a mouse and keyboard, except for when I'm too lazy to sit in front of my desktop and would rather just chill on the couch. It's fast paced and requires pretty much constant input if you want to stay alive more than a few seconds after you drop in. The Gambit feels awesome in this game. The setup with the extra long precision stick feels awesome for me compared to a regular Xbox controller. The expanded range of motion makes it easier to aim compared to a shorter stick. And I've got the triggers set to one position from the shortest. It gives the controller a super fast feel and the rest of the buttons are feeling pretty responsive too. I swapped back and forth between the two faceplates to get a feel for each and ended up settling on the white plastic one, which is what I started with. Feels the most like what I'm used to with other controllers, but that's just my own preference. That soft purple one's really comfortable and it's easy on the hands. It's cool that it comes with both, it's always nice to have options. I did a little racing with it too. This is Forza Horizon 5. This kind of game doesn't require ultra fast triggers, so I relax those back to the longest travel distance. I'm using triggers for acceleration and braking, and that long travel actually gives me a nice smooth modular feel over those controls. I was going to swap the long stick for one of the shorter ones, but after getting into the game I ended up wanting to keep it. The added height doesn't make it uncomfortable for me, so this is probably just going to stay on here until I come across a game where I feel like I really need the shorter one. Jumping back to that domed stick for a second, it felt comfortable, but I had a little bit of trouble keeping my finger right where I needed it. So for that reason, I ended up swapping back to one of the more standard concave sticks. Some people complain about wired controllers or wired anything really when it comes to gaming, but each system has its own advantages and disadvantages, so it really comes down to personal preference. With wired, you don't have to worry about battery life or any wireless lag or signal issues. Plus wired stuff tends to be cheaper. If you're interested in picking up a Victrix Gambit, check the description below. I'm gonna have a purchasing link for you down there. And if you use the promo code ECPU10, you can save 10% off your purchase. Thanks for watching, get subscribed for more content, and we'll see ya.